welcome one and all uh, we would just wait for a couple of minutes and uh, would kick start in 2 minutes time Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from wherever you logged in. I welcome you all for the Evosis Live Advisory Webinar. This is a webinar on workforce management and compensation uh, for 20C quarterly update. Just a couple of house rules today. For all attendees, you would be able to enter your query in the question window. Of the go up to webinar so at any point in time you're free to put your questions on the question window uh, we would like to have the session more interactive so we have certain poll questions which are completely anonymous so we would request you to participate on those online polls the presentation and this session recording would be shared with uh, all of you in the next 48 hours and it's time we begin our session This is Vishnapriya Narasimhan, your speaker for today. Along with me, I have Anurit, who would be the host to support for any technical ideas here. I am a principal consultant. I take care of Oracle, HCM, and my job is basically to help you realize the value that you have from Oracle Cloud. The agenda for today is going to be straightforward. First, we want to talk about our approach to Oracle updates and then the analysis on workforce management and compensations in terms of new features, uh, known issues or bugs, if any, and then a bit a heads up of what are we doing as part of our AMS and what's our offering. At the end, we would finish it with a Q&A session where you would be uh, able to speak and ask questions, so we would have an interactive session then. So before we dig further on the approach of, for our Oracle updates, I would like to quickly start a poll question. I know some of you must have uh, answered this question in your previous sessions, but for the benefit of uh, the ones who are new to us, I'm just launching a poll question. So how do you perceive this Oracle's quarterly update? Do you see this as an overhead? Or do you see this as a value addition? Now, depending on your role in the organization, your perception of this would vary. But this would be very important for us to understand so that we know where we have to focus in order to get, in case if you feel that as overhead, because I see few of them have voted that as an overhead. So we, we would work to, uh, with you to see how we can change this overhead to a value addition. 54% have voted. I'm just waiting for this to be close to 70, and then I would close this poll. Just a few more seconds. Okay. Thanks for voting. Uh, so we've received 60%. But let me just share the results with you. So. Out of the 60% who voted, 80% feel it's a value addition and 20% feels it's an overhead. Uh, we would ensure that the sessions that we are sh presenting would actually help you realize the value in a much better way. Okay, so how do we look at this upgrade process? Is It's a four-step process where we first do an analysis of the features that's been introduced in the upgrade. The second step would be to plan along with the business and IT team. So we know we now know what are the features, but then we also have to plan because we have just have two weeks. So we have to plan what are the new features that we would take and push it on to the production instance. So execute regression testing. So this would be from both the parties where we would do regression and user acceptance testing. And then finally launch these features on production. So this webinar is going to concentrate on the first aspect, which is analysis of the features. 
just a quick uh, guideline on how to read the feature. So the one that you see here on top would be the feature name as in from your Oracle readiness document. The details here would be short bullet points which would explain you what is this feature about. But then yes, this is a feature, but then what's the business benefit out of the feature is what we would actually focus in the session. And the major item of this entire webinar is the impact analysis. So this is an analysis that's being done by Evosis where we see impact levels. So impact level is whether it's low or high would indicate how much effort would go behind enabling or using or launching that feature. Need to enable, this is a option that Oracle conveys. So whether this is a feature that's gonna come by default when the upgrade happens, or is it a feature that you have to opt in? Configuration would just mean that they, there could be some default features, but then we would have to do minor configurations there in order to uh, start using that feature. So this particular flag would indicate whether do we have any configuration to be done? Yes or no? The last but the highlight of the entire session is the quick win. So what do we mean by quick win is the time that would be required in order to enable this feature and the impact of having this feature. So any feature would become a quick win if I have less effort to be put in terms of testing or enabling or configuring, but has a quite significant impact from a business perspective and would enhance the business process. So that would become a quick win. While we do have bifurcated as quick wins and not quick wins, the one that are not quick wins does not really mean that they are not nice features to have, but it just means that you need more effort in terms of either configuration or testing, which is why it's not termed as a quick win. So let's quickly jump into the features, first with the numbers, like how we do usually. So there are 37 features, uh, which are new from workforce management and compensation. So when I say workforce management, it means um, absences, Oracle time and labor, and then compensation modules. So you see here there are 37, but then we're gonna focus on 26 features, which we which are quick wins. So they could be default or opt-ins, but the configuration is very small for them. So, and the impact is huge. So the bifurcation of the entire presentation is quick wins default, then the quick wins opt-ins, and then we would talk about OTBI enhancements because that was a, a requested uh, discussion. And any replaced or removed features, known issues or bugs, and the rest are the features, so which we say are the ones that are not quick wins, but then we would emphasize you to read over them and if required, have a one on one discussion with your project resources. So, first on the quick wins default, there are two categories here default, and I don't have to do any configuration, default with minor configurations. So let's first look into default with no configuration. So, these sections, because we're going to deal with three modules absence management. Oracle time and labor and compensation. Under each section, before we talk about the feature, I would have highlighted if this is an absence management feature or a OTL feature or a compensation. So we're gonna start with absence management. The first feature is related to a local and global transfer. So. Uh, in our core HR webinar, we would have seen that there are a lot of enhancements that have come up with respect to local and global transfers. So one among them is that you can now see success and failure message when you're moving absence plans from one entity to another. So when you have certain absence plans uh, and you're moving an employee from one legal entity to another, now you can enable, you can choose to also transfer the plans. So when you do so, you get a 
dashboard called as change legal employer dashboard which would ideally let you see what is the status of each and every plan so whether the plan has been ended successfully in your previous uh, old legal entity or if the plan was not able to be ended what was the error what was the balance that got calculated or did not get calculated so basically it gives you a complete picture of what has happened to the absence plans when there was a local or a global transfer The next feature is on the duration limit for absence records. So until now, uh, whenever you make an absence entry, there was no limit set on the absence entry. In the sense, uh, if you do not define a default limit, so when we create absence types, we have an option to tell this is the maximum duration that a person can take for a particular absence type. For example, you might have a uh, compensatory or a compassionate leave, for example, which you do not want to take beyond five days in a year. So you have, or maybe at, at a stretch, you cannot take more than three days. So th these are the limits that we would define at the absence uh, type level. But let's assume you, if you haven't defined anything like that, until now, there was no default limitation. But going forward, we can set a default value. And if we do not set any default value, for example, for an hourly type of an absence, the limit would be set to 4,160 hours. Now, as an administrator, you'd be able to change this. So why do I have to have this? Or what is the benefit of this? Is that you can prevent people from entering unnecessary uh, or incorrect long duration of absences, which also impacts your payments sometimes. So this is just a checkpoint in the system where you ensure that somebody is not doing anything wrong in terms of entering absences so the next feature is on time and labor this is a wonderful feature i would say so there is an enhancement to the process called a uh, unapproved time card transfer. So basically, if you have any uh, time card uh, that has to be pushed to payroll, uh, there is a process. Now this process has been enhanced with two factors. One is you can now choose a from date and a to date parameter. So you can restrict the date range on which you want to basically prepare your entries and push it to payroll. And then this time card period is no more a mandatory field. So earlier it was a mandatory field, which was means it was restricting to a particular time period, but now it is more on the from and to date. So the benefit is that you have the uh, access now to include a wider range of data if that is required when you push data to payroll. The following features would be on compensation. So this is, uh, again, a wonderful feature, which would be a quick win. So on the responsive UI, you now get an explanation on why a particular salary cannot be updated from the progression grade ladder. So you all would be aware of a grade ladder progression process that happens in the system that we can do automatic or manual. Now, this kind of messages were available when we were in the classic ui but in the responsive this was not there earlier but now you can look at the reason of why a particular salary would not be changed with a progressed grade rate so for example in this case you see that it would not be progressed because the current salary is actually greater than the proposed salary Total compensation mass sprint. So this is a new task that allows you to print statements, compensation statements as a bulk. So this is uh, basically available when you want to print in the statements uh, as a document. But then the only point we have to uh, keep in mind is that these documents are available only for 14 days from the date of submission. So post that, it would be uh, 
purged so you would have to download and save them in case if you want it for a longer duration okay this is a very minute change uh, not a very uh, uh, change from a business perspective but it is more for look and feel so there are changes in the worksheet so earlier if you if you had noticed this worksheet has a cross symbol but this cross symbol actually is not a closure but it actually uh, collapses this particular section so it was a bit misleading when you say close so this is now modified with a normal a uh, downward triangle which would be used for your oracle to collapse or expand so something like the one that you see here so that's the benefit here uh, more that it doesn't confuse the users when they are looking at the screen the next one is eligibility date change in workforce compensation so uh, when you have this or when you run the process the start workforce compensation cycle or refresh workforce compensation data it now uses the eligibility determination date rather than the extraction date or hr data so basically uh, this process what it would does is because it's going to use the eligibility determination date that is now set up at the plan you get the exact and correct information when you run the workforce compensation cycle or the refresh workforce compensation data so uh, it has an updated records of employees in the list because it's now working on the eligibility date rather than the hr data extraction date view salary adjustment posted report now so this is a modification in this report where it currently was showing amounts only with respect to two decimal places but from 20c it would show based on the decimal precision that you have in the worksheet the compensation worksheets the same would be used in salary adjustment posted report so it is just maintaining consistency across various screens and reports when you view the amount information this is again a nice feature so for customers who are using dynamic calculations on compensation earlier uh, you were able to review or validate those dynamic rules only from the application level so there was no export option but now from 20c you would have an export option like this which you can export on excel sheet and then check your rules or validations so this is more easier in terms of a usage and also verification so if you want to do quick calculations on excel that it enables you or let's say you have a large amount of validations and data so it's, it, it can become difficult when you have to review them on the application and it's more easier if it's exportable limit managers model usages so until now uh, managers were allowed to create or apply models but uh, you know regardless of whether they were allowed to use or not or what is the usage that is available for them but now from 20c you would be able to configure what are the uh, model usages that are available so based on whether you enable them here or not you can actually configure and say what is available for a manager for their workforce compensation plans i think this is uh, the last one in compensation probably uh, for a, uh, a default feature reset budget amounts when unpublishing so uh, whenever we have to uh, unpublish a budget earlier there was no way that uh, you could reset the values so it would still contain the previous budget amounts or percentages uh, or unpublished amounts so this was a bit confusing when when uh, you were reading a budget that was unpublished but now you can reset those so it is just a a configuration option where you would you know you can see a checkbox here where you would just check that and say reset amounts when the budgets are unpublished i think just one more i'm sorry receive warning when configuring rounding rules so this is also again with respect to configuring rules on a compensation uh, so when we 
a, define a rule on an attribute until now there was no messages or warnings that would come up if you're trying to configure a rule on a particular percentage column and that one already has a rounding rule so that it, it was doing multiple roundings sometimes which was getting us incorrect values or you know not the right calculations so now what you see is that you would have a warning that says now you cannot apply the rounding rule on this particular attribute more so because it already has a rounding rule so it's more like a control here a checkpoint where you ensure that you're not doing uh, something that is already uh, available for that particular attribute purge otbi hierarchy so this is uh, an enhancement in the sense uh, where you now would have to run just one process whenever you have to purge so uh, in the backout workforce compensation data process you have an option to say full backout which means it's going to remove even the otbi hierarchy table earlier you had to run a separate process called synchronized hierarchy if we have to purge the hierarchy but now that's not required and it's just a checkpoint so this is more for an administrator who who does this backouts so that completes us with quick wins that are default and requires no configuration Let's move on to default with configurations. First on absence management. Oh yeah, so I'm gonna hear people gleaming now with, when they hear this feature, because this is, uh, I would say, one of the wanted features from multiple customers. Uh, so you all must have seen the absence um, balance calculation cell service page that was enabled as part of responsive ui where the person can actually see what is the balance that they have but what was the flaw of this was that it always shows balance as on system date and that balance would never include any absences that were already raised in the future ideally showing an incorrect balance so for example, let's assume I'm going to look at the balance as on today, but I have raised a leave already for August first week. That particular leave was not considered when we see the balance as on today's date. So this was a major glitch that we found on the responsive UI, but that is now corrected by giving us an option to choose on what particular date do you want to see the balance calculation so you can default to that now to say that you want to see the balance as on the last calculation date which mean which would mean your accrual period end date so if you're on on an yearly accrual period from jan to december then this last calculation date would mean 31st december of that year current date would obviously mean the system date on which you're trying to see the balance so the benefit here is that you have a greater flexibility now you can see the right value without navigating to multiple pages or changing dates and so for most of the customers i would suggest that they put this balance calculation date on last calculation date so as an employee when when he's looking at the balance he's going to look at the balance that shows all the future leaves also considered for that particular accrual period so this is a 100% win and the configuration is just a, a very minor configuration that has to be done on the additional attributes of the plan. You also have an option. Now, let's say the employee wants to see it, not just as an administrator, even as an employee, you would be able to change this particular option and then you can see. So it, it's, it's not restricted to one particular date here. one point to note here is that this is just for the accrual plans it is not for any compensatory or donation plans so for those plans the balance would still display as on the current date so this is applicable only for accrual plans okay this is a feature that gives more clarity in sense of Whenever you have multiple assignments and you have uh, sometimes people having different kinds of plans attached to different uh, assignments, 
or sometimes you have the same plan attached to both the assignments but then you would want to see what is the balance or what is the enrollment available for a particular assignment so from this release you would be able to clearly look at that detail so if you see here for this particular person the vacation plan so it's the same plan but on different assignments one is on uh, wfmtl analyst and the other is on wfmtl project leader and you see the entitlement against each of the assignment individually which gives more clarity on what assignment he has and what information so the same detail can also be viewed from an administration perspective where you can see what is the assignment so you see that there is also a new uh, column that's added which would tell you what assignment and what's the balance uh, that's remaining okay this one is a decimal place configuration so on the absence duration and plan balances uh, it will now show maximum of two decimal places by default so i remember for some of our customers we actually uh, personalized it to show uh, it as uh, uh, two decimal or three decimal as, as they wanted now as an administrator you can also configure how many decimal places so if you do not configure anything it's going to be by default two decimal but if you configure you can then choose two options so one is always show and the other is show a maximum of so what is the difference between the two is very simple when you say always show irrespective of what's the balance so for example if you see here this person has 148.667 hours and this is like 7.6 hours now you see that the decimal places are retained here when you choose it as always so no matter what it would always show you three decimal places now when you set it to show a maximum of it just means that if there are no decimal places it's not going to show you anything but if there are decimal it will be maximum only for three that's a very minor difference so if you want to keep it uh, uh same or similar for across all kinds you can then choose show always so it, it's going to be common across any value moving on to time and labor here there are enhancements on reported hours so basically um there are you know for you would have filtered lists now so where you select what is the state or what is the city when you're entering a time card there was no link between the state and cities earlier but now you have them linked so it's more of a controlled list of value that you would see here and um, you know this would enable that you don't choose an incorrect state versus an incorrect city the next one is on hcm experience design studio for time and labor so what this means is that as an administrator now you have the authority to configure fields to show or hide just for display purpose also on the time cards or on the team schedules so uh, these are certain fields of course not restricted to this list you can either show role business unit legal employers person number so these are certain fields which you can say you want to show or hide on a particular time card so if you want to keep your time cards clutter free and just want to show the frequently used fields and hide the ones that are not used then you can just configure and make the look and feel of the time card more clear so it enhances the usage of that particular page moving on to compensation new feature here so this is an update in the digital certi certification so you have an, a desktop integration which requires a certification so uh, with this upgrade uh, the digital certificate is uh, published so you just have to if you've already chosen trusted publishers you might have to add new certificates so that uh, you don't get any uh, notifications saying that the certificate is uh, expired so that brings us to a closure for quickwins which are default uh, 
at this moment i would like like to take a pause and check anurit do we have any questions uh no we don't have any questions yet uh please feel free to ask any questions which you have in the question or chat panel we would love to answer them thanks anurit so moving on quickly to the quick wins that are opt-ins first on the absence management okay now as an absence administrator you have a quick link or a quick action which you can navigate to see the person management details so until now you would have to uh, close your absence window and navigate to specifically uh, uh, under my workforce and then click on person management and look at the again absence details but now you have a quick link under the absence administration section itself where the person management section would have two actions one is to view the absence records of a particular person and the other one is to look at the work schedule that is assigned for that particular person so it's more of an easy access for the activities that you have to perform as an administrator Under time and labor, we now have a print time card options on the redesigned cell service pages. So you can now see a print time card in case if you want to print the existing time cards. It could be for your time card or even for your team time card. So you can just print them. This is just an enhancement where if you want to maintain a hard copy of it for some reason, you can then now use it. okay the team schedule page is also redesigned so when we say redesigned here it more means that depending on the device that you're using to look at the team schedule the display is changed so if you're looking at a bigger screen you actually see a complete week schedule and anybody who's got a blue dot indicates that they have updates to their schedules so this is more easier view as a manager you would be able to look at the team schedule but if let's say you're looking at it from a smaller device like a mobile then you just see a single day view so the page responsive page actually displays based on the device size so that you don't have to scroll here and there to actually view the complete information The next is on compensation. So, as part of the compensation uh, approve, uh, page or the compensation information page, now when you move people from one legal employer to the other, it now shows those legal employer changes. So, it, it's more clear to see all information. You, you would see the business titles, what is the legal employer, what was the, uh, you know, the share from a compensation perspective so it's more easier to view all legal employer information at just one place yeah this is again a wonderful feature which which i think um, we were wanting to see is that you can now include input values for uh, any individual compensation action and you can use that uh, when you send it for approvals so basically let's say you have an individual compensation for uh, for some business trip so then what they, there could be multiple input values but then the compensation approval notification was not wasn't showing all those input values so it was pretty difficult earlier for the approvers to actually understand what are they approving but now they would be able to see this input value details so which gives them a clear picture of what is happening and then they would be able to take a informed decision here yeah this is a feature that i love now so this is an update or an enhancement to the great step progression so before we get into this feature actually i would just take a bit of time to explain what was happening in the background 
So earlier, when there was a change on the assignment on a particular date for a salary, and if we are trying to run great step progression again, which would also create an entry on the same date, the great step progression would not continue and it would throw an error. But now we would be able to allow multiple updates, so multiple step updates on the same date. So if I can just show you the screen here, you see that there is already a salary and a change for step one on 16th of March. With the progression, so you see the assignment action is automated great step progression. This is also creating a record on the same date, but with step two. So this, if we accept when we do a pro pro proposed progression, when we accept this, the batch process would automatically accept it and the assignment would be updated with this new proposed values. So you will see only one record which says that on 16th March, the step is two. So this was something that was required for a couple of customers where there were some changes to done done already on the system manually for XYZ reason, maybe because of a transfer or because of some assignment change. Uh, there was there was a step change, but they ideally want the great step progression to override it. This wasn't happening in the past, but now you have the option to enable that so that you have the new data as per the great step progression. Okay, this is a feature that would allow managers to access worker compensation statements, change statements. So until now, if they ha if the managers have to view the worker compensation change statements, they have to navigate to the community communicate task. But now they can access it directly from my team. So as a manager, I would be able to take all or view all activities pertaining to compensation from my team itself now. So it's more of ease of use. The managers do not have to take different navigations for different uh, tasks that they would want to do with respect to the employee. So that brings us to the end of quick wins. We will move on to OTBI enhancements. I don't think I don't see any questions on the chat window. So I'm going to continue with the OTBI enhancements. Please feel free if you have any questions. We have a team who can answer you, even if it's like in between the session. So moving on to OTBI enhancements. The first one is on the compensation subject area. So this is a very technical change, but the impact of this is huge from a business perspective. So whenever uh, this subject area was getting daily rates as in the rates for conversions it was always picking up the dates from a conversion date called where it equated it to sys date so meaning i should have a record on the sys date for in this J, gl daily rates table and only then i would get the conversion rate so this would mean that if, if there were no changes also, I would have to maintain records on a daily basis, which is not actually the right way to use the system. So it was more of an issue with the logic for conversion, which is now corrected. So basically now it would, it would look, instead of looking at equal to system date, it would look less than, less than or equal to sys date. So which means if there were no changes, it's gonna pick up whatever is the latest record for conversion rates so basically this enhancement uh, from a technical standpoint is a minor one but from a business perspective it's going to give you the correct data and you would not have any error in terms of saying that the data did not exist so this particular change is applicable for the below mentioned subject areas of compensation the next one is on compensation manager dimension. So you have a subject area called OTBI HCM prompts, which now includes the manager compensation manager prompts, which would just mean that you have no more attributes to 
and new dimensions based on which you can do reporting and use them also in dashboard prompts. Synchronized hierarchy. So uh, this has been enhanced uh, with two check boxes, basically, which would say purge and refresh. So if, if you want to refresh your hierarchy from a reporting perspective to use and get correct reporting, you now, when you run the synchronized hierarchy process, I'm sorry. When you run the synchronized hierarchy process, here you can just say if you want to, you can see a checkbox here. You can say you want to force refresh or purge the hierarchy. So it's as simple as that. And then your process would be purged or refreshed as it is uh, chosen. So that's about my modifications that we have on OTBI enhancements. Anurik, uh, do I have any questions on the window? Uh, yes, we do. So we have a question from from Lindsay. Uh, so the question goes like this: For the managers to view the compensation chain statements, can you show more on that? And will they be able to see statements even if they don't have access to a certain plan that statements are generated from? Thank you, uh, Lindsay, for asking the question. We'll be happy to reply. Yeah. Uh, so let's say here the manager would be able to see the statements for which uh, for the plans that belongs to them and for the team members, uh, uh, you know, under them. So basically it is under my team. So the restriction is already there like a line, line manager would do. And it is also for the plans that is specific uh, for that manager that's applicable to that manager. I hope that clarifies Lindsay. OK. Uh, let's move on to replaced or removed features. So this is something that we have to understand so that uh, if there are any action that we have to take in order to uh, uh, replace this feature with the new ones, so we take the respective corrective actions. So there's one from absence management. So this has been there for a, quite some time now. It's not new for 20C, but uh, so the override payment percentage uh, it's from I, uh, I believe around uh, from 20A or 19D. Oracle has already suggested not to use override payment percentage at the uh, plan level, but then override these uh, using payment bands at the absence certifications level. So now what they are going to restrict is just in 20C. You won't see this option of adding a payment percentage override at the plan level. So this is something that's been there for quite some time. So I don't think any of our customers would be having difficulty uh, and actually overriding the payment bands at the absent certification level gives more control than maintaining it at the plan level. So that's about uh, this. I would uh, suggest that you go over known issues or bugs. So I clearly define what is a workaround. So there are certain bugs that's uh, there in the great step progression and uh, compensation sections. I would advise you to uh, please read over them. And if you have questions on them, please feel free to reach us back uh, either through your support uh, service consultants or uh, through the email ID that I would be uh, giving you shortly. Uh, I think I would skip this and move on to closing notes as we are running short of time. So we finished the first part, which is the analysis part. Now the call to action is more on the next three items. So now that we have some time before we have the 20C upgrade, we should start planning with business and IT collaboratively along with Evosis, where we would understand what are the features that you would like to opt in or, or what are the features that you think should be tested thoroughly because you want them on production. So once we have that plan defined, uh, we would also do a regression test uh, depending on your upgrade cycles. So if you're in August, it would be first week of August or if you're in September, it's going to be first week of September. And then post uh, that two weeks after that, we would then launch those features on production. So this is just a quick note on what we do as a next generation cloud managed services. So 
here our focus is to realize the true potential of oracle cloud transformation so we have many customers who have moved from ebus system to cloud so we want you to help uh, you to realize this potential so it's not just uh, you know keeping the lights on meaning just run the business as it is but actually help you and in terms of uh, giving you self sufficiency and innovation in order to achieve your business value out of this cloud transformation so we are also in our continuous improvement in terms of our services and we are aligned to itil and we focus on kpi driven approach where customer delight is obviously one of the key kpi for us and i'm i'm glad to say that we as a whole uh, team across all regions we've received 4.6 rating out of 5 but we still want to improve and reach five on five here and adherence to service level commitments and value realization so in the next 48 hours what we would uh, what you would be getting is presentations with annexures so the annexures would be there session recordings would be there test scripts uh, which would help you to understand how you have to test these new features if you are enabling them a feedback form and you know, if, please feel free to contact us at business uh, at evosysglobal.com or through your project manager for any kind of additional services or quarterly updates or any kind of uh, services that you want to take as part of next generation cloud managed systems. Uh, we have finished with three webinars. We have one more left tomorrow. Uh, that's on UK payroll. So at this note, uh, I leave the table for any question and answers. Uh, please feel free to raise your hands and Anurip would help you unmute and then you can ask your questions. Over to you, Anurip. Uh, please uh, feel free to ask any questions that you may have. We are open to take questions now. You can also contact us in case if you have some descriptive questions to ask. Uh, you can contact us on your project. Ma through your project manager or evosysglobal.com. I would now uh, like to quickly open up a poll question by the time we receive some questions. So we would like to understand, was this webinar useful for you? With a just quick yes and no, I would encourage uh, everybody on call to actually answer this. So this would help us to enhance the way we present uh you know improvement is something that we have to have continue so your feedback would be highly appreciated here i see that we've got 52 percent voted could i please request the entire team to vote i would just give a couple of seconds for them to finish it we close to 60 so I would close it once we have at least 60 and yeah, so we have around 62% who have voted. Let me just press in. So 94% of the people feel yes, it is uh, it is a very uh, uh, you know a useful webinar, but 6% do feel that we can do better. And we would take your comments. Please send us your feedbacks. As a descriptive feedback, I also have one last poll question where you can rate your overall experience. So this could be from the time you received the registrations until uh, the moment now where you think uh, how we have performed five being the highest, one being the low. So I do see there are a few people who have uh, voted us where they think we have to improve. And I think those are the points that we would surely work on so that we have better engagement for the following webinars. I close it here. So we've got close to 80% uh, of the people telling us we've done above average, which is rating four and five, and 20% uh, person people believe that uh, you know, we have to improve and I think we would take those points. Please send us your descriptive feedbacks. You would receive uh, those uh, feedback forms uh, within 48 hours. Thanks for sharing.
I, I hope you're able to see the poll results now. Thanks for polling. Anuj, do we have any questions or any? If if you want to talk, please uh, raise your hand so that we unmute yourself. So let's just give a couple of minutes uh, for people to ask questions if they have any. Uh, we just hope that the test scripts that we share as part of this webinar is going to be helpful for you. Uh, please feel free to give your feedback on the test scripts as well if you think it has to be more um, uh, done in a very more clear way or, or if you think we could involve uh, some other item within the test script that could actually help you. Provide us that feedback as well, please. Anurit, I believe we don't have any more questions. Am I right here? We don't have any questions. I think all of them have been answered. But please do feel free to ask any questions that you may have in the now. Or you can even write to us at business at the rate of versus global .com. Yeah. OK. Thank you all. Thanks for joining the session. Uh, we hope to see you soon um, in tomorrow's uh, UK payroll session.